Now we can resolve a force into its components. We can have a look at how we can test the system to see if the forces are in equilibrium. Now we can calculate a force required to add to a system to make sure that it is in equilibrium. Uh, we can start ourselves off with a nice simple example. So this could be again a GCSE example and a Rhythm Key Stage 3 example. If you've got this system, what can you say about these two missing forces? Well, the force down must be equal to the force up to hold it in a ver vertical equilibrium. So this one must be 10. Left and right must also be balanced, so this one must be 3. Okay, all we're really doing in this video is looking at the same idea, but trying to resolve when the forces aren't all at right angles to each other. So here's an example. We've got a force down, which we don't know. We've got two forces upwards. These are 10 newtons each, and they're both at 30 degrees to this uh, line down the middle, this vertical line. So it's a symmetrical system. How are we going to work out the size of force F? What we have to do is we look for the forces to the right and the forces to the left. This is fairly trivial because we can see that the force to the right is this component of this one, so it's this distance here, this length up here if you like. That is 10 sine 30. You could have worked out this angle 60 and done 10 cos 60 sine 30 cos 60. That's the same thing. That's equal to the force that goes left, well that's the same component of this one, so that's also 10 sin 30. So that's not really told us very much, that's just so that we're nice and complete in what we've done. But the useful part will be to find the force upwards. So the force upwards is the other component of this, so 10 cos 30, and that's got to be equal to the downwards force, but where's the downwards force coming from? That's F. So we've got two lots of 10 cos 30 going up equal to F going downwards. All of this lot is just a number. You can just type that in the calculator and it comes to 17.3 Newtons. So to hold one force downwards, to hold these two forces at these angles upwards, 17.3 Newtons will do the job. Okay, try this one. See if we can do it. Very much the same. This one again, very much the same. Just be careful with your causes and signs. Have a go at those. Pause the video if you need to. And in this one, we've got F cos 50 as the upwards force. We've got two of these, so 2 F cos 50, put that in the calculator, is 6.4 newtons. Do the same with this. We've got 2 F sine 10, because we've measured the angle from horizontal here. That gives us F equals 10 divided by 2 sine 10, 28.8 newtons. Okay, quite a big force sideways here because of the small angle. Okay, it gets a little bit more complicated if the system is not symmetrical. If you're looking for this force F now, the best way to do this is to find the two components of F. So F must have a vertical component and a horizontal component. Here's the vertical component, how big is that? Well, it's got to be equal to the downwards force. Here's the horizontal component, it must be equal to the force going to the left. So the vertical component of F is 20. The horizontal component of F is 10, and then it's like the questions we did before, where we've just got two components, we put them back together, so this is 20, this is 10. Pythagoras will tell us the length of the vector, so this is just 10 squared plus 20 squared, don't forget to take the square root, gives us 17.3 newtons. And then the angle theta, again this is a tan because we know those two lengths, we could use this length and use um, sine or cos, but it's safer to use tan just in case that was wrong. So the best answer is tan theta is 10, the opposite divided by 20, the adjacent to the inverse tan over half, and that gives you 26.6 degrees. So here's two more examples. This one, just like the one we've just done. So the vertical component of this must be 12, the horizontal component must be 5, Pythagoras gives us 13. The angle comes out as 22.6. This one a little bit more complicated because the two, and the two forces in the first place aren't perpendicular. So we've got to work out the total vertical component of F and the total horizontal component of F. So the vertical component's got to balance out with the 12, but also with the downwards part of this force. So this gives us 12 plus sine, 5 sine 20 going down is equal to the vertical component of F, so Fv is 13.7, 13.7 plus 
horizontal component isn't equal to 5 because it's only 5 cos 20, 4.7. But again, you can add those two forces together with Pythagoras. Get F squared is 210, gives you F equals 14.5 newtons. And do the tan minus 1, 4.7 or 13.7, gives you 18.9 degrees. So, another little point we can add to this. Um, if your maths is good enough, you can just move these vectors around. So if you look at these three vectors, if you took that vector and drew it on the end of that vector, that means the total effect of that is there. If I take F down there, you'll notice we end up with a closed triangle. If there's a closed triangle, it tells you, just as if you're walking 12 south, walking 5 west, and then walking in that sort of northeasterly direction by 13, you'd end up back where you started. The displacement would be zero. The same thing with forces. There is no resultant force if you've got a closed triangle. Okay, same thing with this. I take that down there and I take that down there. We end up putting the vectors end on end to get a closed triangle. Okay, the only problem with this is doing those sort of triangles is quite tricky. You have to use the sine law or the cosine law to solve those. And you're probably better off just doing it the way you did it in the first place.